Hello everybody and welcome to the LFC Transfer Room. My name is Louis Fell and today we'll be taking an in-depth look at Ibrahim Sangar, someone who is highly touted to be making a move to the Premier League at some point this summer. Uh, a lot of links to Liverpool Football Club with a proposed fee of around £21 million. However, more concrete interest seems to be coming from Manchester United at this point and that is where most of the rumours seem to suggest he is most likely to end up come September the 1st. However, we're going to take a deep dive into Ibrahim Sangar, what he offers PSV, what he could offer Jurgen Klopp in a Liverpool system and just how he operates. So let's get straight into it with this Ibrahim Sangar player analysis. Ibrahim Sangar is a 24-year-old central midfielder for PSV Eindhoven. It seems that his main position is as a central defensive midfielder. So straight away, that is one of the things we need to ask ourselves is what kind of a midfielder are we looking for? His general play, his pass completion rate seem to suggest that he's much more of a ball carrier and prefers to be behind the ball or with the ball rather than making those uh, runs without it. As with most of our recent signings, he's very accustomed to playing with a team that operates with a double pivot, so in a 4-2-3-1 or in a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-4, as many seem to believe we may try to use more often next year. This again would fit in with those previous signings that we've made and support that theory that maybe we are looking to be a bit braver with the midfield and just use two central midfielders however if we were to stick with our 4-3-3 it becomes a lot more interesting if he is actually a suitable fit for us because of the role that he plays for PSV and what his abilities allow him to do at this point in his career a lot of people see him as a potential alternative to Aurelian Chouameni who Liverpool were also highly interested in but he has now completed his move to Real Madrid and what the stats do suggest is that both players see a significant amount of the ball uh, are fairly accurate with their passing and are both fairly busy defensively but as I said he's much more of a ball carrier rather than a precise passer of the ball for example just 3% of his passes last season or around 3% were long balls, whereas you know a, even a Jordan Henderson has about 10% of his balls being counted as long range. Thiago similarly on 9%. Again, this isn't a problem. You know, diversity and ability is great in a football team, but there's a very clear pattern that Jurgen Klopp looks for from his midfielders. Would he suit a number eight? Would he be happy as an understudy to Fabinho? That's what we're here for to find out. A Liverpool midfielder that I'd be most likely to compare Sangar to is Genie Wijnaldum, who of course is no longer a Liverpool player after his move to PSG, which hasn't gone too well. Um, he's much more of a recycler of the ball. He attempts, he makes a lot of attempts to make incisive through balls and, and, and those long balls. The problem at this point, he is 24, coming up to 25. Can that still be developed within him? Maybe. But he just seems a little bit lacking in that ability to be really incisive and, and actually connect those balls otherwise we're going to see a high turnover uh, in, in possession if, if he's constantly attempting those as I said he's much more of a recycler with the ball and doesn't look to take too many risks with it that often when he does attempt these uh, longer balls these through balls incisive balls and he gives away possession he's often quite quick to then bravely try and make up for his error and try and recover the ball but often gets drawn out of position which Maybe that, that doesn't affect him too much for PSV, but in the Premier League, and I hate to sound so elitist, uh, in the Premier League or in the Champions League against world-class opposition, they are going to make you pay for that quite often. Again, all of this could potentially be coached. This this could be taught to him, and he if, we, if he were to go in and buy him, maybe he would become a sensation for us. Just going off of what he has to offer PSV at the moment and what he's done so far in his career... It just feels like, especially with what everybody's asking for us to buy in a midfielder, he's not necessarily going to give us that. It would be like a replacement for a Gini Wijnaldum. It would be like more of a, a squad option, a squad depth option, rather than someone who's going to really carry our midfield forward, evolve them, give them more of an attacking impetus, 
uh, make them more dynamic in our attack and instead of being used as a, as a second wave, as a way of mopping up essentially and, and clearing up from, you know, because obviously all of our attacks seem to come from wide or, or from Thiago, from Van Dijk. The midfield as a whole is often used to mop up, to stop that turn in transition and to give extra support and fill in for the defence. So if the wing backs are pushing up, you often see Thiago or the right sided uh, just filling in slightly, unless of course it's right up the other end of the pitch. If we wanted to change that, as I said, go to a 4-4-2, go to a 4-2-4, he's not going to add anything. He's not going to add what a Jude Bellingham would add, he's not going to add what a Gavi would add or what a Chiamini would have added. It would be, I don't want to say it's a backward step. For the fans, it probably would be. For, for most fans who want that dynamic attacking midfielder, which many people suggest we've lacked and maybe the final piece in the jigsaw that could help us get past Man City in the Premier League and get over the line in the Champions League, he's not going to be that. I still think he would be a decent buy. For, for the price that is being touted, 20 to £30 million, pounds, if we can get it on the lower end of that, I'd say that's a brilliant purchase. The, the, the only caveat is if we buy him, do we still buy another midfielder who can do what everybody else suggests we need? I don't know. We've already spent £64 million on Darwin Nunes, not £100 million as, as a lot of people are getting confused by the conver- the currency conversion rates. But still, you know, we know what FSG are, whether you've got a problem with that or not, that's your own um, decision. But we know that they're going to watch the books, they're going to try and balance the books with some outgoings as well, and there's plenty of them on the agenda. I just wonder... It feels like we'd probably only get one more player in. Luis Diaz already, Calvin Ramsey, um, Darwin Nunes just coming over the line now. It feels like there's really only room for one more unless something drastic happens, unless there's some major outgoings in that midfield. And I just don't think Ibrahim Sangari would necessarily be the answer to a lot of people's uh, prayers necessarily. And I don't think he will be the person to take us to that next level, even with some tutelage from Klopp and the coaching staff at Liverpool. I think there's better options out there, more expensive, but that's the world we live in. That's what we should be aiming for, the the best of the best, not someone to pat out the squad necessarily. And that's all I believe that Ibrahim Sangar would be able to do. I'm sure he'd be reliable. I'm sure he'd be a great addition to the dressing room. But we've got enough of those. We've got James Milner. We've got Jordan Henderson. We've got Trent. We've got Van Dyke. We've got Canate. We've got Matic. We've got a solid foundation, a solid spine. We need that. You know, Nunes is a bit of a sexy transfer. It's, it's that su- superstar-esque signing, even though he's not necessarily a superstar just yet. It feels like we need another one of those for the midfield. And this sounds all very fantastical and very dreamy. But I think that's what we're looking for. I think we're looking for the right deal. I think... If we don't get our man Chiwamini, we're not going to settle for a lesser version. You know what I mean? We'll move on, we'll dust ourselves off and we'll find other targets that offer maybe the same, maybe different, but it won't be the second or third choice. It won't be the alternative to Chiwamini. It will be somebody else, if, if that makes sense. So do let me know if you think we should sign Ibrahim Sangar and if you think I've got anything wrong about my analysis of him. Should we sign him? Should we leave it be? Should we look for somebody else? Do we need another midfielder? All those questions, let me know your answers to them down in the comments. And make sure you also do leave a like on this video. Really appreciate it. Really helps out the channel. And of course, do subscribe to the AFC Transfer Room as well. We've got all of your content for Liverpool in the build-up to the new season, which will be getting underway slightly earlier than normal because of the World Cup. But do stick around and do tick that bell notification as well so that you know whenever all of our videos goes out. We're live every night from 7.30 and uh, it's a great little community to be a part of. So this has been our LFC transfer and player analysis of Ibrahim Sangar. I've been Louis. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.